My name is Roy Kettlewell. I'm a PhD chemist and textiles consultant. My work over the last 40 years has taken me to over 40 countries and every continent. I've also worked with many of the world's leading textile manufacturers and fashion brands from Brooks Brothers and Marks and Spencers to Levi Strauss, Timberland, L.L. Bean, Smartwool, Thomas Pink and more. As a global manager of innovation for Walmart Company, I spent a lot of time training some very talented designers, buyers and sustainability experts to understand more about wool so that they could then develop new products for retailers and customers. I'm going to spend the next few minutes telling you about that experience. In a high performance environment, comfort is essential and the wool fibre has this inherent ability to uh, manage both the temperature next to the skin and also the moisture content next to the skin. And of course, the beauty of the wool fibre is that it comes in many different types and there are fine fibres out there that really are good next to the skin. Wool is well known for its ability to keep you uh, warm. It's not specifically the wool fibre that does this job, it's actually the air spaces between the fibres that help to insulate. Air, for example, is nearly ten times more insulative than most common textile fibres. So the secret of wool's uh, success in this area is that it has crimp or waviness uh, in the fibre, a natural crimp, that keeps fibres apart, generates air spaces and thus gives you uh, plenty of air uh, to keep you warm. And that air and that fibre also help to keep you comfortable because they're managing the moisture that might be coming off your skin when you do get uh, warmer. Now, contrast that with the, uh, the wool fibre that's designed to be worn next to the skin to keep you cool. There, the aim is to have very few air spaces but you still need some means of getting heat away from the skin surface. And there the wool fibre's got this unique ability to manage moisture vapour. So the vapour that comes off your skin is absorbed by the fibre and then transmitted along the fibre so that it can be released to the outside. Um, some other fibres, especially synthetic ones, don't have this ability. And we in uh, some trials that were done many years ago have shown that the wool fibre can actually transmit 25% more heat away from the skin surface than an equivalent polyester fibre. So wool is very good at keeping you warm because of its ability to maintain air spaces. It's also very good at helping to keep you cool because it transmits heat along with moisture from your skin to the outside surface. Using wool next to the skin is often considered to be crazy. You know, you're going to be uncomfortable because of itchiness and scratchiness. And it's true, if you were to make a garment from this sort of wool, I agree. But these garments are made from the finest American wools. And these wools behave in a different way. A thick wool fibre, for example, in this garment, imagine my thumb is a thick fibre pressing on the skin, presses hard onto the skin. But the fine merino or American fibres, they have ability to bend as they touch your skin. And that puts less pressure on the skin nerve endings. So you're going to feel comfortable, not just because of the moisture management, the temperature management, but also because you're not going to get the sensation of prickly fibres. Wool. Uh, as a fibre is actually designed by nature to protect you from UV radiation. And you can get that same protection when you wear wool next to the skin. So you, you can wear a lightweight garment and you will be getting protection from UV radiation, which is good news, especially in some of the hotter climates. Using wool garments next to the skin uh, does generate the concern about remaining fresh 
especially when you've been doing something active like yoga or running down the, the beach. The wool fibre doesn't have to kill bacteria in order to maintain freshness. What it does, it absorbs the smells of sweat, uh, the sweat being decomposed. And then when you do actually wash the garment, the washing action actually releases those odours and smells and you've got an absolutely fresh garment at the end of it. Wool is not the strongest of textile fibres by any means, but where it lacks in outright strength, it makes up for in its elasticity. And this elasticity is the result of the molecular structure and the configuration of the molecules within the fibre. They're more like a coiled spring. And when you stretch the fibre, when you put it under stress, these springs extend and of course when you release the stress, the springs go back together again. So you can stretch the fibre 30% without any worries. So what this gives you is a fibre that's easily stretched, it's easily bent. In fact, you can bend it 20,000 times and it won't break. This bendiness and stretchiness just makes sportswear feasible often without even including a synthetic spandex or uh, lycra fiber. So not only does it make sense for apparel sportswear, it also makes a great deal of sense for carpets because carpets are simply trodden on and the fiber can bounce back uh, after every step. It makes a lot of sense for upholstery and that's probably why many of the suburban transport systems, railways, they actually specify wool fibres for their seating because it's so tough. It's also stain repellent and so on, but essentially what we have is a wool fibre that's durable. It's durable not just for sportswear, but also for interiors. Wool only needs rain and sunshine uh, for it to grow. Of course, rain and sunshine help the grass to grow and that enables the sheep to feed and to thrive. The fibre itself is also biodegradable. When we finish with the product, it will decompose back into nutrients which will actually feed the next batch of grass that the uh, sheep would need to eat. Also interesting is that it's a renewable fibre. Every year the sheep grows a new fleece and that fleece captures carbon as it's growing which as we know is good for the environment. So we have in wool a natural fibre, it's organic, it's biodegradable and it's renewable. From my observations of ranchers around the world, it's almost to a man that they are more concerned about the animals than they are about themselves. They're concerned about the environment in which the animals uh, feed, uh, thrive, and essentially they're stewards of the land as well as being stewards of the, uh, the, the sheep themselves. If the sheep is not happy, then the, the farmer is not happy. Mainly because he knows the sheep may suffer, but it's also an economic uh, sense. Because if the farmer doesn't look after the sheep and the land, he's going to lose both. The rancher really does have to work in concert with the sheep and the environment. Every year the sheep grows uh, a fleece and the wool on the fleece it could be two to three inches or even more long and so the farmer has to take off that wool and he, this wool um, essentially comes off rather like this what we um, would say is the raw fibre the raw greasy wool and um, that's carried out in a process which we normally call shearing shearing is essentially the same as going to the hairdresser. We all need to get our hair cut occasionally, it's just the same for the sheep. The farmer or the rancher has a duty to do that. 
Now, the shearing operation itself uh, is carried out with electric shears. And after that, the sheep is away, it will get some feed, and um, it will forget about the whole experience. Wool is full of amino acids, and many of these amino acids contain nitrogen. And as we know, nitrogen uh, is essential for plant growth. So yes, wool does actually contribute uh, nutrition to the soil in which it decomposes. Several years ago, I was involved in some trials where we buried garments made from wool, from cotton, from synthetics such as polyamide, polyester and polyacrylic. And then, after three months, we dug them up to see how things were progressing. We found that the wool garment had actually nearly decomposed. Uh, we had trouble finding it. The cotton garments were decomposed a little, but the synthetic ones, they were almost pristine. In fact, I don't have an answer if you ask me how long it took the polyester garments to decompose because I'm only 63 years old. We're, in many cases, polluting the environment when we wash our synthetic garments. Uh, for example, um, garments like this fleece shed fibres uh, when we wash them, every time we wash them. In fact, something like 35% of all microplastics that are found in the waterways are associated with textile fibres. Now this cannot be good for the environment. We're going to end up eating our own textiles. The wool fibre, that decomposes naturally. So we're not going to be polluting the waterways and we're not going to be eating uh, our own textiles. I hope I've helped provide some information to dispel some of the common misunderstandings about wool. For example, myth one, it's bulky and heavy. Modern wools in multiple weights and weaves allow for light flowing fabrics. Myth two, it's itchy and scratchy. Wool has always meant a luxurious feel in suits and dresses, but today wool athletic apparel is soft and comfortable, even directly against the skin. Myth three, it's difficult to care for. Modern wool products maintain their shape and colour and are naturally stain and odour resistant and are often washing machine safe. Myth four, I'm allergic to wool. Wool and human hair have the same chemical makeup, so while many people with sensitive skin feel uncomfortable wearing wool, they are experiencing a sensitivity to coarse wool fibre rather than an allergic reaction. Today's American superfine wool fibres eliminate those reactions and allow people with sensitive skin to enjoy all the benefits of wool products without experiencing the discomfort they might have experienced in the past. I hope what I've been able to tell you today has really given you some insights into this amazing fibre.